We need to finish up the main bed area of the Prusa Mark IV now, so on we go with the LCD assembly. So delve into the plastic parts box for the bag of 3D printed LCD parts. Into the large electronics box for the cables bag. And the smaller electronics box where we'll find the actual XLCD panel itself, securely packaged and wrapped in protective bubble wrap. Anyways, with all that to hand, we're going to start with a couple of plastic parts here, namely the LCD top cover as well as the side brackets. And of course, the electronic LCD board itself. At this point, take a look at your display board to determine whether you have version A or B. I have version A here with the PE connector at the top, whereas version B would have it at the bottom right corner. Note there's no functional difference between the LCD boards, the only difference is the position of the PE mounting point and the compatible printed parts. So, starting with the two side brackets, locating the slots on the ends of each, we insert two M3 square nuts, push these right down into position as far as they go, repeating the process on the second bracket. With those prepared, move across to the LCD cover. Note the recess across the inside bottom edge, specifically located for an adhesive reflector. So go ahead and carefully peel back the adhesive sticker, before positioning the reflector strip over the recess, making sure you press the strip right down into the recess as you move along. With that in place, back to the LCD board now, place the right support on the USB connector side of the board. Note that the support incorporates a small ridge that hooks around the circuit board. Once hooked on, line up the hole in the plastic part with the hole in the XLCD board. After which we insert the LCD with the bracket in place down onto the LCD cover, double checking to make sure the hook on the bracket still holds onto the LCD, otherwise you won't be able to attach it later. This should all fit perfectly into the recess before securing it to place with an M3 by 8 screw, just until snug. Once in position, place a PE fastener onto the top hole labelled PE and secure with a single M3 by 8 screw. While installing, note that the bent half should be pointing to the right side of the board, as shown. We can now proceed to attach the left bracket by aligning it with the two holes in the board and secure with another two M3 by 8 screws. No need to over tighten these, only until snug. We'll start connecting some cables up next, specifically reach for the main LCD ribbon cable as well as this PE cable. Starting with the LCD cable then, note the safety latch on one side of the connector. This must be plugged into the side of the LCD slot marked with the triangle on the board. Double check your cable is connected in this orientation, as otherwise your display won't work. It's the PE cable next, note the two circle connectors at one end, and a square connector at the other. It's the square end we need. Slide the connector onto the metal fastener we previously installed, all the way down. Now flip the unit over, and proceed to push the knob down onto the pin, lining up the flat edges. This is friction based, so simply push down into position. The orientation of the knob doesn't matter at this point. We're ready to get this installed onto the printer frame now. To do this, insert four M3 by 10 screws through each of the available holes from the inner side. Now, guiding the LCD and PE cables under the plate, bring the LCD assembly towards the frame and secure using the four inserted screws going straight into the side brackets with the square nuts we pre-installed earlier until nice and snug. With that secure, guide both cables through the cable clips on the inside of the frame and back towards the electronics box. That's the LCD assembly pretty much done at this point, so we'll go ahead and move our attention across to the power supply area. You'll find this easier by repositioning the printer onto its side with the power supply facing upwards. Now providing clear easy access to the row of connectors across the bottom, which is where we'll be working next. Begin by removing the left screw on the PSU circuit board. Note there is a washer on this screw, so take care not to lose it. Next we place the end of the PE cable into the same place we just removed the screw from. 
note that the flat side of the end connector should lay down flat on the board, before securing into place by reusing the same screw together with the washer. While tightening, guide the cable so it does not interfere with the threaded column just beneath it. We're now ready to install the main power cables. Notice how one end of the cables incorporates a round connector, while the other end incorporates a fork. It's the fork end we'll be concentrating on for the moment. Taking a closer look at the fork, note how the tips are slightly bent in one direction. When installing these fork ends, always ensure these tips are facing upwards and away from the board. So with one cable in hand, loosen the first screw. No need to remove it completely, just loosen slightly. There's a square washer beneath this screw. Guide the fork from the red cable beneath the washer. Remember the tips on the fork should be facing upwards. Once in place, proceed to tighten the screw down, taking care to be firm yet gentle, since we don't want to break any plastic parts from beneath. Repeat the same process with the black cable. In my case, it's red and black striped. Although this time we're securing it into the third connector along and remembering to go under the washer with the fork tips facing upwards. Secure down into place. So at the moment, we have connected one power cable, red into the first slot and black or red and black striped into the third. Repeat the same process with the second power cable, securing red into the second slot and black into the final slot. Take a moment to double check the connections here. It's very important they are correct, as incorrect connections could cause major damage to the printer. So red in slots one and two, and black in slots three and four. Looking at the two cables, it's red in one and black in three, and red in two and black in four. With these double and triple checked, reach for this power panic cable and connect the black connector at the end to the available socket on the right side of the power supply, while routing the cable so it meets with the existing bunch. Finally, place the PSU cover over the power terminals, making sure the Prusa logo is facing upwards. Also, make sure the cover is seated properly and no cable is being pinched underneath before attaching the cover by using the two M3 by 10 screws through the marked openings. Bear in mind the openings are quite deep, so secure until snug. Once in place, looking from the bottom of the power supply, guide all the cables through the two cable clips installed earlier. Sticking with the underside here, and specifically the Z-axis right motor cable, insert a zip tie through the holes in the frame, and proceed to close the end very loosely to create a loop. This can get a little fiddly, but persevere and tighten the zip tie. No need to go super tight here either, just enough to keep the motor cable nicely tucked under the frame. Continue downwards and using another zip tie, create the next loop in the frame. Guide the Z-axis cable and all cables from the PSU through the zip tie, trying to place the PE and power cables at the bottom of the bundle. Continue guiding the cables along the frame and towards the electronics board. This time, include the Y motor right cable into the bundle. Secure it with another zip tie to the frame in the same fashion as previous. With that done, carefully guide and fold the LCD ribbon cable under the cable bundle without adding it in for now, so leave it free. Although we do need to include the PE cable in with the existing bundle, so proceed to do just that and secure the cable bundle with a zip tie before bringing the bundle across and up towards the electronics board. Here we need to start connecting into the board. Begin by attaching the PE cable connector to the lower right screw hole in the XBuddy box, using a single M3 by 6 screw, complete with an M3 washer in between. Tighten the screw firmly while making sure to guide the cable so that it does not interfere with the threaded hole under the electronics board. We'll connect the power panic cable next to the white connector on the bottom of the XBuddy board here, just above the previously installed cable, before moving on to the four power cables. These have circular connectors, so the screw will pass through completely. So, using the supplied power terminal screws, we start with red, then black, then red, and the final black, making sure all terminal screws are firmly tight, as with the power supply, double check to ensure cables are installed in this orientation. Incorrect wiring can cause major damage to the printer. Take the chance now to secure all cable paths using zip ties to the cable clips. 
the power cables, PE cable and the power panic cable in one bundle secured to the left cable clip, and the LCD ribbon cable and motor cables on the right clip next to the frame, since these will go further up the side of the electronics board. On to the left Z axis motor cable now, and just like the right we have some holes in the frame to insert a zip tie, before carefully tightening and clipping off the end in order to hold the motor cable neatly in place. So let's get everything else connected in now. Start with the X and Y motor cables, which go into the two remaining ports across the top of the board. So from right to left we have the Z right and Z left already connected. Next is the Y cable. And finally we have X. Next we'll move to the large LCD display ribbon cable, up the side of the board and into its slot just here. Again the safety latch on the connector fits into the top side of the port in this orientation. With the LCD ribbon cable covering the motor cable, secure into the side of the chassis with the bottom two zip ties installed very early in the build. Take care not to over tighten and then very carefully clip off the ends. So all that's left is the main extruder cable, which connects into the remaining slot on the right side of the board. After which we can neaten the cabling and tighten the cable bundle with the two upper zip ties, again taking care not to over tighten the zip ties and carefully snipping the ends of the ties. And that's it, we're done with the LCD assembly, as well as most of the cabling coming back to the electronics board which is much more spacious and easier to work on than with the predecessor. Join me in the next chapter where we'll continue with the final Y axis as well as get everything wrapped up for build completion.